How's it going? I am just recording videos today. Look at the great lighting. Lily's in here working on her school. I have a call with my brother for brand deal tools and things are going in general pretty good. Um, Michelle gonna be was going to be playing Minecraft. She's super stoked on Minecraft, so that's cool. So today is um, running ads, running campaigns. Um, I've got campaigns for conferences going out, email campaigns going out. Just tons and tons and tons of work. Um, so I'm going to jump on a call with Barrett and go over some of the features that we're working on for Brand Deal Tools, some of the things that we're thinking about with this. And I think it's just going to be cool behind the scenes to figure out what we're trying to go for for a minimum viable product that we can use and sell and it's going to be helpful to our audience. I think that uh, you could constantly add more and more and more features and never ever launch your product. But figuring out what are the main things that are going to provide the most value and the most benefit, especially when you're beta testing things, because you're going to want to add stuff anyways, no matter what you do. Um, I think that it's going to be super valuable to just get a product that is works well um, and provides really good functionality for you know what what we're working on um, and the main objectives that we're trying to do. And we were talking too, and I was thinking about this. Um, that there are competitors that I didn't realize um, inside of there. One is Social Blue Book, um, and they have features and functionality. I just found this out. I don't know how come I didn't research it or find it, but I think that it's going to be easily overcome, easy to overcome, um, and we just have a different kind of product. So that's cool. It looks like Mimi is waking up from the nap. Hi, sweet. There she is. And so, anyways, just going to keep working away, and um, today's going to be great. I'm going to bear it, by the way. He's right here. Michelle says hello, Barrett. Hey. All right, dude, what's going on? Okay, Brandon, so let's just go over our features over the better proposal features, okay? Okie dokie, Brian. Okay, just so we get a clear list. I'm going to write this down. Let me get a paper. Una papeles, Brennan. Ibolegrafo. My kids write all over my papers. They just, like, scratch one scrabble on the page, Brennan. You see that? You just do, like, one scrabble. Scribble, scrabble. Okay, so, Brennan. The dashboard, okay? Okay. Dashboard. What's going on with the dashboard? So do you think they need to create a proposal for each brand deal, perhaps? Yes. Or, okay, so, or do we want to have like a contact us page, right, for these users? That they get the leads in and they can create a proposal to send out automatically to them. Or so I think that those are different things. Proposals are specific. Um, media kits, which are, are you interested in partnering with Brandon? Request media kit. Then we get info. We send them the dashboard of here's our views, here's our users, here's our demographics. Let's set up a time to talk about the specific proposal. Got it. Because it's more than one step. It's not just like somebody's going to go click and buy something, right? You might not want to work with the company who sends you a request, you know? Sure. So this isn't so much as we're sending things out. It's all just going to be they're requesting info and they get the media kit, right? Correct. So how, how do we know which template that they want to see, right? So there should be a media kit template that's just templated. I know, but what if they want like a media kit to, for a family brand? Like, what if what if they're like a family vlogger, right? Okay. And they have like one that's like I don't know, maybe not. Maybe they only need one template, I guess. So I, I think that there should be templates that are branded to like whatever colors they want to do and formats and things, and we should probably be able to create custom templates too so that if we get bigger influencers that already have established brands, they can make something that looks like their brand. Okay. 
because we're not we're not going to get bigger creators unless they can make it look cool. Probably. Okay. And I guess one thing to think about would be, like you, don't you have like three YouTube channels? Yeah, but so what? Then you'd have to. I don't. I don't actively upload to them. If you have your specific brand for each deal, like Cody Cohen just... has a. He he's not going to do. He's not going to be like I want all of my brand deals to go to the same one. He's got. His... I know. This is my thing, man. Listen to me. So. I'm saying, do we want to have multi-account support so like they can switch between like their different channels and they can manage everything? So I think the way that we should do that is with TubeBuddy does. Can I show you that? Yeah, let's see that. So what, what should we show on the dashboard? Is what I'm saying. Any new leads coming in? Any new media requests, media kit requests entered? That kind of stuff? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And views and that kind of stuff? Mm hmm. Let me make sure my screen. Can you um, stop your share, please? Okay. Um. What kind of stuff do we want to ask? I guess the company name, like for the media kit request, what kind of, um, we want like company name, URL, contact info. So see, this is how we sign into TubeBuddy, which is, this is it's like I have all of these different channels and client accounts, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to pay for individual licenses for each one. Got it. I think that should just be an upsell. We have like, you can have one account versus okay. multi-account. It sounds good. So... I think that that's cool. And then I'll show you what I'm collecting right now for Cody. So if we go to speaking and partnerships, we have email, first name, phone number, and then comment section. Okay. We need to have those be required fields. What's that? That's the link to that? No, I have a. Oh, there's one right there. Email, phone, name, comments. Got it. And then after that, they get the media kit, but it's the URL, right? And so we're going to do tracking on page times and views and stuff like that. So then we can have a contact, see how long they sure. watched. That's cool. Okay, so maybe I'll just leave the dashboard for last. We'll see what data we have and what's important, and that'll kind of be the hub for notifications and stuff like that, I guess. Okay. I think that makes sense. Okay. What we need. Okay. And then the proposals and the templates. This. So, like, what, for example, what what Cody will get, and we see this inside. People will just give them a brief description. So, like, this is the notification that we get on his deals. Um, I'm sorry, let me see. I think you stopped sharing. Oh, I did. You did. So, we'll get this. I just use lead pages right now. But mm -hmm. it's like, hey, I'm looking for a speaker here. Let's see what the next ones show. And it, like, what's that? What's that one thing called that like is like the intermediary thing between the APIs? Zapier. Zapier. Maybe we'll integrate with Zapier too and have a Zapier out feed that like the leads come in, they can do whatever they want. Sure. 
So I'm like, they, they, they'll submit this. And they'll be like, hey, we're looking for speakers for these dates. Hey, we're looking for Bye. speakers. I'm looking for speakers. Most of them are speaker deals, honestly. But he's, you know, inside. So editor for Profitable Practice Magazine. So, Got it. book publisher, speaking gig. Okay. Speaking gig. So on our proposals page, this is just going to be kind of a simple CRM where we can write notes and stuff on what they got, right? And maybe next steps and that kind of stuff, just kind of where they can keep track of all their media kit requests and what they were asking for and how to contact those people again, I guess. Mm -hmm. and then the templates, obviously, is going to be our templates. And I don't know if we need reports yet. We'll probably just hold off on the reports. Okay. I think that's okay, especially if there's a dashboard. Like, automated reporting should be features for add-on leaders. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I just don't think it's that. Reporting for deals would be cool. Like, put in the URL of the video that you're you're using so that they can monitor and track um, performance. Yeah, that's kind of like this reports just like your set, your income. So that's kind of like a new feature that I think it's a great idea. But uh, so it'd be you can assign you can create new URLs and stuff for client reporting for sure. That makes sense. I think that would be super super powerful. Client reporting thing. Okay. And I was looking at Social Blue Book. They actually have proposals built into it and payment and pricing and all kinds of things. Did you know that? Uh huh. I didn't know that they had those proposals, but they're PDF generating proposals. And they're also, I don't like the, it's like not functional for how brand deals actually work and how inquiries come in and things like that, you know? Yeah. So I think they're going to be our number one competitor. I agree 100%. You know that Shay Carl's uh, brother-in-law's business? No. Yeah. That's interesting. Well. Yeah. You know uh, his sister Carly? No, I don't really follow Shay Carl very much, especially. I don't. Do they even create content anymore? I don't know if they do or not. But anyway, it's her husband is the CEO of that company, and I think he's invested heavily in it with his maker. So they have they have funds, but they can't. I don't think they can move as fast. They Probably have connections too, you know. They have users and people that they know and all kinds of things. I don't think we need a huge user base to be successful, though. You know. No, for sure. Yeah, it's easier for us to copy a feature that they have. Well, I don't. The think smaller they generate PDF proposals, dude. Like if you push a button and it yeah. generates a proposal, and it does takes the data that you input manually and makes makes that proposal. So I don't think yeah. that works as good. But I think it's a different product. And also, I don't like how they give you um, suggested CPMs. It's like, yeah, you could buy right. AdWords, but that's so different than getting an endorsement from the creator. Right. Beautiful. Plus, you don't want to put numbers in the thing. You want to see what client it is, right? So if you're doing something for Emirates Airlines, you're going to charge way more in your CPM, you know? If you, so, have, if you have a travel yeah. vlog that you travel to Hawaii and it's exclusively Hawaii and you only have a small audience but they're only like listening to Hawaii things for travel tips, it's way more right. valuable to an audience for Hawaii versus like a car insurance, you know? Right. Pre-roll is not even comparable metric in my opinion. So. Right. And plus you have long tail of it and if the channel gets more popular over time, it's going to continue to perform and all that good stuff. So, you know. Anyways, yeah, I, I, think, I think that that is an, a weakness of theirs in general. So, well, maybe what we could do is partner with them too. Maybe so. Maybe they want integration, Brandon. Right maybe we'll just um, license it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Instead of being enemies, it could be partners. Yes. Too. Exactly. Cool beans. Well, hey, man, I got I to gotta run. Michelle's okay. heading out to a hair appointment. So. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. All right, so that's going to do it for today. I think today went really well. Um, I think that the ads and stuff that we're going to have 
for this product are going to be super solid because we have just our target audience really dialed in. I think probably when we start out, we're going to focus mostly on smaller creators rather than influencers, like big sized influencers, just like I would say probably people that are in the, I don't know, probably 75,000 and below subscriber level. And I know that's a big, those are big influencers still, but they're not like mega, mega Casey Neistat style sized ones. Um, so people that are probably trying to figure out their monetization a little bit better, really offer a bunch of ongoing support and training and all kinds of things from the marketing standpoint of like been been there helped to negotiate brand deals with people help people get speaking gigs and you know just all of the resources and tools that i've used as a digital marketer and coming from that perspective of what do companies actually want so i think that's super valuable it's going to be pretty cool and um that should do it so anyways we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog have a fantastic day and don't forget subscribe and Talk to you soon.